So today we are going to make a first fermentation of kombucha and I will show you how we are going to do this. So today we are going to make a first fermentation of kombucha and I will show you how we are going to do this. And for this we will need uh, some equipment, I would say. Um, I have here a strainer and it's best to use a plastic strainer. So not metal because uh, the cultures of the kombucha will uh, react to the metal and it's just not as good for them. Also we will need some sugar tea and I will show you how to make this one. Then we will need some uh, starter kombucha, so some kombucha from your last batch or uh, from a friend or whatever. And we will need a scoby and that's the culture. And that's what we have in here. So this is my kombucha brewing from the last batch. And yeah, as you can see, it does look maybe a little bit disgusting, <laughs> but it isn't disgusting. And here we have the scoby floating on top. And there's another scoby um, just at the bottom, and that's the mother scoby and the baby scoby. So, with every fermentation of kombucha, you will uh, get a new scoby. And um, yeah, so there are some cultures laying at the bottom, so that's why I'm gonna stir. And of course, you will need some bottles for your kombucha to put in afterwards. And um, I will use just a jar, a clean jar, to put the baby scoby, so the new scoby, in with some kombucha. Uh, to put into the fridge to uh, just store that and yeah you can store as kombucha scoby with some kombucha for about half a year in the fridge and it will still be fine and usable and then you can use it again to make kombucha if you are searching for some kombucha scobies with uh, some starter kombucha uh, and you live near me you just contact me so to make the kombucha we need also some tea and i am going to make a green tea kombucha so I'm using organic green tea and uh, we will need sugar and I'm using raw cane sugar. And because of my big glass jar in which I'm gonna make kombucha, there it does fit in about two and a half liters. So I'm gonna make two and a half liter of kombucha, which will be uh, 200 grams of sugar and 20 grams of uh, green tea. Per liter of kombucha you are gonna make you will need 80 grams of sugar and 8 grams of tea. And I'm just going to put in my sugar here. And I will put boiling water on it to just dissolve the sugar into the water. And then just stir until it is dissolved completely. And then I will stick my uh, therm thermometer in here to just see um, how the tea cools off. Because my green tea, I just brew my green tea with about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, so I will let the tea, um, the sugar water cool off until it is about 70 or 80 degrees Celsius and then I will put in my tea. So the tea already has arrived at the right temperature and then we are going to add our green tea. And the reason why I uh, brew green tea with uh, not completely boiling hot water, so about 80 to 70 degrees Celsius, is because uh, otherwise it will taste more bitter afterwards. So. Um, yes, it's just better to don't brew green tea very hot. So here we are with our green tea and just put it in. And then just close it off and let it sit. Or you can do this the evening before or whatever you like. And make sure your utensils are always very clean. And now we have here our starter kombucha, our scoby. I just rinse my jar and I also cool it down with some colder water. So it's not too hot for the kombucha because we don't want very hot. Uh, for the kombucha because the cultures would die uh, from the heat. So we just want this uh, room temperature, it's best. And now to make our um, first fermentation of, fermentation of kombucha. We are going to need our sugar tea, a big jar with a cloth. So I am just using a kitchen towel. And um, yes, you could use a tea and cheesecloth uh, also. Uh, so a big jar and I would suggest uh, using a jar from about uh, 2 liters or 3 liters. 
because the kombucha does take a little while at, until it's ready. So then you have some to drink. And um, yeah, you can do this of course also with one liter, but yeah, you have to wait a while for it and then you have only one liter. So I always use a big jar and this one is about two and a half liters. And um, for this we will need our sugar tea and I have here um, sugar tea for two and a half liters. And then we take our tea bags out and I did leave them in because all the minerals can soak into the tea and that's good. You can just brew this like normal tea. I will squeeze them out a little bit. And then we will add in our tea. And we will also add in our uh, starter kombucha. And I would suggest to use 200 milliliters of starter kombucha per liter of new kombucha that you want to make. And um, so I have here 500 milliliters for my new batch of two and a half liters of kombucha. And for this also you will need one uh, scoby, so that's in here. Scoby is in, starter kombucha is in, and now we will fill it up with cold water. I will stir it around one more time, you don't really need to do this, but it's okay. So uh, we have here now our uh, scoby in here, the mother scoby I will call it. As you can see here it is. And um, yes, that one will just float around. It just can be that the model scoby comes to the top here and is floating here, like it's gonna do now, a little bit. But it can also be uh, that it's just vertically hanging into your um, kombucha or laying at the ground. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. And the mother scoby will uh, form a new scoby while your kombucha is brewing. And um, yeah, then you have a new scoby. Look, it's now floating to the top. So now it's here, and it's probably the new scoby will just uh, grow on top of the mother scoby here. But the new scoby is normally always growing on top of the kombucha. So that's uh, why I also did fill my jar far enough to just this circle, because then the new scoby will also get this nice circular um, form and not the bigger uh, form here, so because it's growing here at the top. And um, now you can just cover your kombucha with a clean kitchen towel or some cheesecloth and just put a band on uh, at, uh, around it to fix it. And then set it aside for uh, seven days to two weeks. And it's just depending on your room temperature how fast this is will go, but um, seven days is probably the minimum. And during fermentation the kombucha is, uh, or the cultures, the scoby is fermenting the sugar, so there is not as much sugar at the end product as in the beginning. Yeah, if you compare kombucha to water kefir, kombucha does, uh, does have uh, less bacteria and more yeast, and water kefir does have more bacteria and less yeast. So that's the difference, the big difference between them and water kefir doesn't take as long to make. Kombucha does take a little bit longer and, and the longer you will wait the stronger it will get so the more sour and tangy it will get um, and I like it uh, pretty strong so the sugars are as much fermented as possible and um, yeah then I have my kombucha for standing for about sometimes two weeks. And um, yes, it's depending on room temperature how fast this will go. But seven days is minimum and I would say if you start making kombucha, just start with seven days because it does taste just um, more sweet and better to most people. And uh, yeah, just set this aside at the counter or somewhere and not in direct sunlight. And kombucha doesn't uh, like light a lot. So therefore um, put your cloth on top and so no direct sunlight. To the kombucha because that will harm the cultures also from growing. So this will be green tea kombucha. Uh, it's important to uh, use green or black tea for your kombucha because the minerals um, in the green or black tea are important for the kombucha scoby the cultures to grow and not every herbal tea uh, has these minerals so therefore it's um, always good to use green or black tea. I've never had it going wrong and I'm brewing kombucha now for about a year. Uh, so and it does work. Kombucha is really easy and really easy to handle. You just have to prepare this and set it aside and forget about it for about a week or a little bit more. 
And then we just cover our kombucha with a clean uh, kitchen towel or a cheesecloth and yeah, put the band on it and then set it aside at the corner somewhere and not in direct sunlight and uh, it's best to just set it somewhere where it's not too busy so where you don't walk always around not too near a garbage bin or something like that where um, can bad bacteria um, flow around in the air and uh, just set it just somewhere at a quiet uh, place and yes forget about it for a while and um, yes that's it and you need the towel or a kitchen cloth or a cheesecloth uh, to just make it a little bit breathable. Oh, and what I forgot to say, and uh, kombucha is really nice um, with your meals. So kombucha, because of the sourness, the tanginess of the kombucha, and uh, the comp uh, yes, the combination of bacteria and yeast, it's nice to have it with your meals. Uh, it's helping a little bit in digestion. And um, yeah, the water caviar I wouldn't suggest to use uh, during meals. It's better to use apart from meals because otherwise you can get um, easily bloated from the water caviar. And this is what the kombucha looks like. Okay. There's some at the bottom. These are just some cultures. That's nothing to worry about. And then we can see here the kombucha scoby. And that's what it looks like. And sometimes the mother scoby just floats around here or is hanging here, whatever, and that does differ. Um, at this time, uh, the mother scoby is just um, pecking at the back of the baby scoby, I think so, so they are together. And then you can just separate them again. When your kombucha is ready, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drain the kombucha I have here. So with the mother scoby. Then we are going to get out the scoby. So now this is one. And the second one, just sink to the bottom right now. And it may look a little bit disgusting maybe to you, but it's very hard and stiff. And it's almost a little bit rubbery. And here are some culture hanging on the bottom. There's nothing to worry about, it's very normal. I will put in one scoby here. This one uh, is for storing and this is what I'm gonna use. And what I'm gonna do is stirring this around because of the culture is at the bottom of the big jar. And then we are just going to strain it. And then I am going to fill this into the bottles. Of course I make a mess. I'm also going to add some to my kombucha scobies. And we also need some kombucha for a starter. And this is what I'm gonna do. And because I have about a two and a half liter jar of kombucha, which I am gonna fill again. And um, for that I will use about 500 milliliters uh, per yeast. So about 200 milliliters of starter kombucha per one liter um, of kombucha that you want to make. Close your bottles. And you can drink your kombucha just like this, put it into the fridge, but you could also flavor it in a second fermentation and I will show you in another video how I'm gonna do that. Um, but you can also drink it like this. And then in another video I will show you the second fermentation with the green tea kombucha. And, then, and that's also called flavoring, so we are gonna make some delicious flavors and sparkling kombucha. And um, I will show you how to do that then. So thanks for watching! Bye.